This, this right here is called a shrink line, also called a hull line, and it's caused by a lot of different reasons that people keep on confusing online. So we're gonna go through this video and show you several different ways of attempting to deal with this. Some of them work, some of them do not, but none of them use the slicer. So these hull lines are a very common occurrence to come up with containers or anything where you have interior walls. You will always see it up here. If you have ribs on the inside, it might pull out. A couple weeks ago, we did a design of organizers and we showed off how just having some thick walls and supports inside of there pulled in and created these hull lines. But this one right here is a very simple model that we're using for testing. And it is just a square dish with a flat bottom and the bottom base of it is about this thick so that it is able to have enough material inside of there to create a real difference between the walls and the base. But we're gonna go ahead and show some examples of how this works, because the operating theory and operational goal is, okay, you have a bunch of material inside of here, which then takes longer to print, but also more material to shrink. So at the transition from this thick, solid bottom to just these thin walls, you have a transition line. And that may be true, but let's go ahead and check it out. So generically, we start out with a nice thin one millimeter wall all the way around. And you can see the line quite distinctly there, or right at the transition from the thick base to the walls. So the first thing that we'd want to do is like, okay, well, the material is shrinking and moving a little bit. Let's go ahead and thicken up the walls so that it cannot affect it anymore. And now there's not as much of a transition. And that is true, but you still have it there. That transition line still appears in the exact same spot. And I wouldn't even really say that it's more or less because it looks almost identical, maybe even to a degree in some areas worse than the one on the original thin wall design. So thickening the walls doesn't really seem to do it. Um, also, print time wouldn't really be a relevant metric on this because yes, it takes longer to print along here because you have this top surface, but then why don't you have the pole down at the bottom too? So there's this transition area to where there's more or less support on the inside. Let's go ahead and continue doing geometry changes. Uh, the next one that we do is that everybody has tried is literally just adding a pattern to the outside. This is a great, simple, and proven way of getting the stuff done. Texturing like fuzzy skin in the slicer if you want to, or literally just designing a pattern in because you want these things to work on any slicer. This is the important thing about designing 3D prints. If you are dependent on the slicer, then your part cannot be produced by other people or mass produced by other organizations. It's your special little recipe for Coke and only your settings will work to make your part. Whereas if you just design the part reliably, then it will work anywhere. And texturing and patterning is a great way to do that, to where the hull line becomes invisible because it aligns with one of these ribs. Also, by the way, I recommend checking out Factorian Design video about this over there. He goes through slicer settings and ways of dealing with whole lines there. We're gonna talk only about geometry because if you need the slicer, you cannot pass it to other people. So let's just go on from there. So the operating theory here is that this does not shrink because that layer time is different. The layer time is certainly different because it spends a whole bunch of time printing there when it doesn't have that on the outsides or even on the interior where there's infill. That full single surface is there. But we know from our warping video that generally changes in geometry are due to long pieces of material that are connected that then pull and squeeze or push as they cool and shrink. And this top surface of this bottom area is a large amount of material that is shrinking and pulling in. Fiction Products talked about how you can kind of separate this from the outer wall, but now you're doing really specific slicer settings and you're making your part weaker because you're removing a connectivity in between the layer lines, which you don't want to do. You want your prints to be reliable and strong and not have an internal invisible weakness. So that's probably not the best idea. But if we're dealing with shrinkage right here, maybe the thing to do is to just alleviate some of that shrinkage and remove stress. You can add chamfers and fillets on the inside, but you still end up with a stress concentration. What I tried to do was I wanted something that was less dramatic because a chamfer in the corner will also change the dimensions to where if you have something sitting in there, it just won't fit anymore. So what we did was basically try to make a little dish to where it's a very subtle chamfer to where individual layers are just made smaller. But if you look at the whole line on this, again, it is less than the original sort of, but also like not really. Like it's so subtle of a difference that it's not really worth it. It would improve it, certainly, because you're relieving the stress. Each one of those steps cannot all build up on each other because they're all pulling in different planes and diagonally from each other. But we did end up moving the hull line up a bit. So all of these, even though it's almost too shallow to where if I was gonna try this again, I would make it deeper so that they are not able to pull horizontally together with everybody here, but they have to pull this direction 
option, which would have less of an impact on there. But just creating a simple dish down at the bottom doesn't really seem to fix it. But if you're making like a flower pot or something, you could basically do a hemispherical cutout and that would probably eliminate the hull lines almost completely. But let's go ahead and move on to the next one. The next thing we're doing, okay, well, Slightly changing the angle of the force of the shrinkage didn't quite do it, but it does seem to have an impact. So what if we just disconnect the interior from the walls completely? That's what we did with this one. What we did was we made just a cut around the outer side there, which is very clear, but also allows this interior part to still be dimensionally accurate, but the outer edge to separate it from the walls while still being embedded with the walls. Because there is geometry down below that still makes sure that this surface is fully embedded there. You just have several lines stacked, and then the core part stacked. So it's similar to kind of just making a cutout there and not having this upper surface because it's separated from everything else. But now you have the same visual look because you can't really see the groove that we've made around the outside. And looking at this, this did have a grand impact on it all to where the whole lines become almost completely invisible. There's still a bit of it there, but you can see that there's this basically nothing it's pretty much gone which is a very simple fix because you can just create an offset from whatever your interior profile is extrude that down one millimeter and then the hull lines can disappear and it will work on anybody's printer and on most materials because you've disconnected all of that material pulling in from the wall working on that i'm a little bit lazy and sometimes doing an offset isn't quite right and it does kind of potentially impact strength so i was wondering could you just relieve the stress enough that it would eliminate the hull lines by just cutting out like a simple circle cut out inside of there. Now, instead of having straight rastering lines straight across here, you only have the ones on the outer edge. So there's not as much material to pull in on it. But ultimately, this didn't really do anything with all that material just in contact with it. Any material behind the wall created a difference to where you still have pretty demonstrable hull lines there that pretty much match the original even though you've removed a lot of these stresses inside of there because these center ones are no longer connected to the outer ones. So that was kind of an interesting thing that I did not expect. Uh, certainly if we could figure out a way to enhance these, we could probably find out by what percentage they are the same as the originals, but that's not really measurable with a feature that is this subtle. But we know that just simply cutting something out of the middle doesn't work. But what if you pattern it? What if you really discreetly cut out each one of these? Because there's like a large amount of material right there and a large amount of material in those corners. What if we just symmetrically cut it all out. So we went ahead and did that with this one to where the bias is still connected with everything, but then we have these small fat ridges brought up so that again, you have a uniform bottom surface that stuff can sit on without creating weird holes or gaps or slats and that kind of stuff. But this effectively kind of hacks the slicer by creating an area where the top layers are broken up to where you don't have a continuous, continuous layer. Everything underneath these top ridges doesn't have a full complete ceiling. This is basically making a bunch of cuts individually. It is important to note here that what we did was we raised the grid, we did not raise the squares inside of here. When you raise the squares, you create a whole bunch of islands, which creates a whole bunch of retractions. But if you raise the grid, that is one continuous surface. So it can print along all these areas and not have to do a pickup and move all over the place that can cause retractions or stringing or sorts of post-processing. So you get the effect that you want without having any bad side effects. But we go ahead and look at this and then we look at the side and the whole line is still there, but it's different. The whole line is somewhat dotted. So this is weird to me and this is weird for a couple of reasons, but the whole line is dotted and it's dotted right where the raised ridges are. These raised ridges have diagonal print lines. So you wouldn't expect them to be able to build up enough shrinking strength to cause a problem, but they are. Even though as I look at this, I look at the problems and I see them, I perceive them as bumps. So it's almost a situation where it's not shrinkage, but the lack of shrinkage to where we are back to layer time and the amount of time for this to be printed as it comes down, it just has a slightly more side extrusion right there. And since it's able to be cooled because it takes a little bit longer than a regular line, it holds its shape more reliably than other areas that are printed very quickly and then just shrink down. So this is an interesting side effect and an interesting dynamic when you're trying to deal with this. But what it all comes down to is basically you can't. If you have a difference in geometry of the wall thickness here, you have to deal with the hull lines. And the only way to completely deal with it is to completely remove them from the equation. It is to create the most subtle, 
impact possible, which is fine because this is actually one of the easiest and one of the most reliable ways of creating a hull line. Just create a groove all the way around the outside. I didn't think that this would work as well as it did. I thought that internal volume would still push or pull on the layers below it enough to create a significant hull line. And there's still one a bit, but it's not big. So the secret, if you really want to make the hull line virtually disappear, obviously, if given the option and you can do it, use textures. You should always use textures. The textures and the patterning is something you get free with 3D printing, use it, it's a superpower. But if you really need a vertical surface that is just immaculate, you need to cut off the floor of whatever thick areas you have so that they do not impact the outer area. What do you do about ribs and that kind of stuff? No idea, because maybe you should just avoid those and have fat infilled areas. A chamfered corner rather than a bunch of ribs, and then you won't have ribs pass through and cause shrink errors because this is a dynamic of 3D printing and one that you can go down a rabbit hole forever. But if you just want to get rid of a simple hull line at the bottom of a flat thing, go ahead and just cut out the outer edge around it. It'll still be strong and reliable because you still have that solid base, but now you have a discontinuation. That single solid upper roof doesn't have as much impact on the outer wall as you would have. And now you can really clean up the issues with all of these. So if you go from the original, you can eliminate a lot of it by just creating the cutout around the outside, but use a pattern when you can get a hold of it. It always comes back to patterns. Use the texture. It's awesome and is a superpower of printing. Have a great day, everybody.